from Michigan, where it's lick your favorite Dollar General employee day. This is Kurt Berglund with more Pine Tar Baseball. Today, a special broadcast of the 1936 East-West game, which, as you probably know, was the Negro Leagues All-Star game um, back in the 30s and 40s, and I believe even into the 50s. Uh, our source book for this uh, is one that I rep that I that I recommend uh, very strongly. It's called Black Baseball's National Showcase. It's by Larry Lester, and it covers all of the years from 33 to 53 of the East-West game. Um, this is the 1936 Pine Tar Baseball Negro League set, which is available now on the website, ttlbaseballgame.com, ttlbaseballgame.com. Let's go through the lineups. Uh, I want to give you an idea of the voting. Uh, there were, in 1936, this was done by newspaper balloting and mail-in votes. Um, so the ballots were printed in newspapers, and folks mailed in their selections for the All-Star Game uh, for the East and the West uh, teams. Um, so the leading vote-getter, in all of uh, the balloting in 1936 was Satchel Page. Now, there were 338,433 votes cast. Um, Satchel Page was the leader among all players with 18,275 votes. Um, so for all the positions, um, he was the leading vote getter. Um, and so what I'm going to do is to go through the starting lineups for today's game. Uh, but first, let me tell you a little bit about the game itself. This game was noteworthy for a few different reasons. It was the first blowout in East-West All-Star Game history, East-West Game history. Uh, the final score was 10-2. to The East won. The West was the home team. The game was played in Comiskey Park on August 23rd. 1936. The East-West game, as you might know, was a very, very big deal with Negro Leagues baseball fans. This was bigger than the World Series, um, for sure, and players that played in it uh, felt very, very honored and certainly did their best. Um, so let's go through um, the Voting, first of all, and then we'll do the lineups. Uh, the game was a blowout. The East won 10-2. to 2, um, But let's see if that happens in our game here as well. What I've done is I've taken the actual uh, players that were on each team, and I've, ta I've taken them, and I have their Pine Tar baseball cards right here. We're going to use the cards uh, and dice to play the game. But before we go to the lineups, let me give you a little bit more of an idea of the voting. Um, there were six pitchers uh, that were um, sort of ahead of the voting. Uh, Satchel Page had 18,275 votes. Leroy Matlock, who was the starter for the East team on this day, had 11,106 votes. Ted Trent... 10,697, Bill Bird, 9,781, and those were the top four. Robert Griffith was fifth with 9,335. So those top five uh, were the top five pitching vote-getters uh, in this game. For catchers, the leading catching vote-getter was Subby Bias at 10,177, Harry Else, was 8,746, and Josh Gibson, believe it or not, was third in the voting at 7,995. At first base, Jim West was the leader at 8,274. Sammy Hughes was the second base leader at 5,902. Uh, Newt Allen was elected as a second base shortstop. He received 7,583 votes. 
Alec Radcliffe, the brother of Double Duty Radcliffe, Ted was his name. Alec Radcliffe was the leading vote getter at third at 5,821 votes. Judy Johnson had 5,516 votes. At shortstop, Chester Williams had 6,600 votes. Willie Wells had 6,300 votes. Uh, and in the outfield, um, the leading vote getters were Goose Curry, Cool Papa Bell, Jimmy Crutchfield, Bill Wright, Zolly Wright, and Leroy Taylor. Um, so that gives you an idea. Sam Bankhead also received uh, more votes than almost any other position player at 10,085. So uh, that gives you an idea of some of the players that were elected to the game. Uh, not all teams were represented at this game. The Pittsburgh Crawfords, the Washington Elite Giants, um, made up the uh, East squad, and the West was made up of the Kansas City Monarchs and the Chicago American Giants. Uh, so for whatever reason, those four teams were the ones that were uh, represented in the game. All right, so let's look at... Some starting lineups. Uh, first for the East squad, uh, Cool Papa Bell will lead off. Uh, he's in center field. Sammy Hughes bats second at second base. Uh, Sam Bankhead bats third in left field. Biz Mackey bats fourth and does the catching. Jimmy Crutchfield bats fifth and plays right field. Chester Williams uh, bats sixth and plays shortstop. Jim West uh, bats seventh and plays first base. And Judy Johnson, the famous third baseman Hall of Fame member, uh, is the third baseman and bats eighth. The starting pitcher for the East squad is Leroy Metlock, who played with Pittsburgh. As you can see, he is a B pitcher, and he will be doing the starting pitching for uh, the East squad. For the West, the homestanding West, again playing at Old Comiskey Park. Eddie Dwight leads off in center field. Newt Allen bats second at second base. Wilson Reedus bats third in right field. Alec Radcliffe cleans up and bats fourth and, sorry, and plays third base. Bullet Rogan uh, plays left field and bats fifth. Harry Else bats sixth and does the catching. Uh, Curtis Harris is the first baseman and bats seventh. And Willard Brown who also played a lot of outfield in his day, played shortstop and hit eighth. Sug Cornelius is the starting pitcher, and as you can see, uh, he is a D-grade pitcher against Negro League competition. He will bat ninth. All right. So, that's the West squad. The managers. Uh, we have manager cards in Pine Tar Baseball. Oscar Charleston is the manager, and actually was the manager, uh, for the East squad. And the manager that I've selected uh, it was um, the manager was Bingo DeMoss, uh, but I'm using Vic Harris as the manager of the... Uh, West. All right. So there we are. Um, we are just about ready to get this thing rolling. Okay. I'm going to do some housekeeping here. All right. And now we are ready. Okay. Leading off. Uh, for the East Squad, Cool Papa Bell. He was a switch hitter. The pitch to Cool Papa 
was lined, and that's a base hit up the middle, and he is aboard with a single to lead off the game off Willie Cornelius. Cornelius uh, pitched for the Chicago American Giants, and he has a limit of seven innings in this game, although we have some other pitchers we're going to get in as well before then. Bell leads off first base. The catcher for the West Squad is Harry Else. He's a minus five. Bell is a 71. They're going to send him. And he just stole second base. And Cool Papa Bell is on second with Sammy Hughes standing in. There's nobody out. Hughes. Hits a fly ball to left field. And that's going to be taken for out number one. Bell will retreat to second base. And Bullet Joe Rogan took the fly ball for out number one. Sam Bankhead wants to drive in pop-up. We'll see how that works out. <clears throat> Pitch to Sam Bankhead is ball four. He takes his base. And the East squad now has runners at first and second with one man out. Biz Mackey, all-time great catcher, taught Roy Campanella how to play the position and is the cleanup hitter for the East squad. He stands in and lifts one to right field. The right fielder is... Uh, Wilson Reedus, Frog Reedus, as he was known. And Bell is going to tag up on second base and try and reach third. He does. And so it's first and third with two outs as Mackey's fly ball moves Bell. So Bankhead's on first. Cool Papa Bell's on third. Jimmy Crutchfield is at the plate. Right fielder for the East squad. And Jimmy hits a ground ball to first base. That is gloved uh, and taken by Harris. And he will step on first himself. And that will retire the side in the first inning. The East squad comes up empty in the first inning of the East-West 1936 East-West game. And the West squad is coming to bat. Eddie Dwight is the leadoff hitter for the West squad. He will face Leroy Matlock. Matlock is a left-handed pitcher, and he pitched for Pittsburgh in 1936. This one's lifted to right field, and this will be taken by Crutchfield, and that's one out. Newt Allen, the second baseman for the West, stands in. He hits a ground ball to shortstop, and the shortstop is Chester Williams, and that's two down. And batting third is Wilson Progridis, who is in Chicago American and had his salad days, I guess you would say, with the St. Louis Stars. And this is a line drive. Uh, line drive at the third baseman, and that is... Judy Johnson. Johnson can't make the play, and that ball's by him into left field. Reedus is aboard with a single, and with two outs, that'll bring up Alec Radcliffe, the third baseman for the Chicago American Giants. Uh, Reedus has some speed, but they're going to hold him. The pitch from Matlock to Radcliffe is a ground ball to third. That's taken by Johnson. He's going to go the short way and get the force at second for the third out of the inning. We've played one complete, and the 1936 East-West game is now underway for both teams. We are scoreless. In the top of the second will be Chester Williams, Jim West, and Judy Johnson for the East squad. Uh, Willie Cornelius still in the game. And that's a ground ball to Newt Allen at second base. And he's going to throw to first for the out. That's one down. 
Jim West is a right-handed, oh, sorry, a switch hitting player, batter. For the Washington Elite Generals in 1936. And he draws a walk. And he's aboard at first base with one man out. Not going anywhere. Jim wasn't too quick on the bases. Judy Johnson is the eighth place hitter for the East squad. And it's a comebacker. It's a comebacker to Cornelius. He whirls and throws to sh to second for one. That's Williams back to uh, Harris for the double play that gets the West out of the inning. Uh, Judy Johnson hitting into a 1-6-3 double play kills the East's chances in the second. We go to the bottom of the second. We're still scoreless, and it'll be Bullet Rogan, Harry Else, and Curtis Harris for the West Squad. The pitch is hit to left field. This one's fairly deep, but playable for Sam Bankhead, and he'll make the play for out number one. Rogan, of course, famous as a pitcher as well as a position player. Harry Elst stands in. He's the catcher for the West squad today. And he takes the first pitch for ball four. The, sorry, the fourth pitch for ball four. He walks on four straight. And Curtis Harris stands in. Harris was the first baseman for the Kansas City Monarchs. In 1936. This one's hit on the ground to short. Chester Williams flips to Hughes for one. And then back to West for two. And the, the East squad turns an inning-ending double play themselves. So we have matching bookends in the second inning of... Rally killing any ending double plays. So after two complete, it's the East nothing and the West nothing in the 1936 East West game. Leroy Matlock leads off against Willie Cornelius. And Leroy hits a ground ball to third. And that's taken by Al Gradcliffe who throws to first for the out. That's one down in the third. Cool Papa Bell, who singled and stole a base in, in the first inning, uh, draws a walk here in the second inning. Let's see what they might want to do here. They're going to send Papa again. He's saved through 66, and Harry Els just shot him down. He gets caught trying to steal one too many, and with two outs, Sammy Hughes is still at bat. And we have an error chance. Hughes hits it to first base. And Curtis Harris kicks it for an E3, and Hughes is aboard for the one-base error. Sam Bankhead with two outs, and Hughes on first. The pitch to Bankhead from Cornelius is lined, a base hit that lands in center field. Hughes is around second. He's going to go to third, and it's first and third with two outs for Biz Mackey, the cleanup batter for the East squad. There's two men out, but men at the corners. Hughes at third, Bankhead at first. And this one's lifted to right field. That is Wilson Reedus, who's going to take it for out number three, and we've played two and a half in Chicago, and we are scoreless. Willard Brown, the eighth place hitting uh, shortstop for the West squad, is going to lead off. It's going to be Brown, 
Cornelius and Eddie Dwight, the leadoff hitter, in the third inning. Willard Brown hits a ground ball to third. That's Judy Johnson. He throws across to West, and that is one down. Willie Cornelius. Cornelius hits one to center field. Center fielder is cool, Papa Bell, and he gloves this one. That's two down, and Eddie Dwight. Eddie lifts one to center, a little deeper for cool Papa, but he's got it, and that's out number three. We've played three complete in the 1936 East-West game, and we are scoreless. Willie Cornelius still on the mound for the West squad. He will face Jimmy Crutchfield, Chester Williams, and Jim West. Error chance for Crutchfield. Got a check. 16. Ground ball to short. That is gloved by Willard Brown. And Brown makes the play for out number one. Chester Williams, the shortstop. He's 0 for 1 today. Right-handed hitter. He lines a base hit. This one lands in center field, and he's aboard with a single for the East squad. Jim West, the first baseman for the East, stands in. He walked back in the second inning. There's one man on. Chester Williams, not quick enough to do too much with at this point. And West draws a walk. And so there's two on with one out. And let's see if the East, or I'm sorry, if the West wants to make a change. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, they do. They're going to make a change right now. Uh, let's see if they maybe want to make a double switch. No, they don't. Okay, so Cornelius is going to get pulled. Uh, Vic Harris comes to the mound and gets him. The new pitcher is going to be Floyd Cranson. K-R-A-N-S-O-N. Cranson. He is a right-hander for the Kansas City Monarchs in 1936. Let's give you Cornelius' numbers on his departure. He went three and a third. He allowed three hits. He walked three men. Check that. He walked four men. He struck out none, and he's allowed no runs. However, he's responsible for two men on base at the moment. Cranson is in the game. He will bat ninth. And Judy Johnson is at the plate with the pitcher, Leroy Matlock, on deck. The pitch to Judy Johnson from Cranson. Cranson will show you his card. Cranson is a B pitcher, and he turns into a C the third time through the order. All right. And he, I believe I told you, is a right-hander. So Judy Johnson stands in. The pitch to him is lifted to center. Eddie Dwight is going to be in a few steps and make the catch. And now Oscar Charleston has an interesting decision to make. Does he stick with Matlock? Or does he try and get some runs? And... Looking at the bench. Seems like a good time to try and get some runs. Um, I 
He's going to go to Wild Bill Wright. Uh, Wild Bill Wright is going to be the pinch hitter for Leroy Matlock. That will remove Matlock from the game here in the fourth inning. Matlock pitched three innings, allowed one hit, one walk, struck out none, and allowed no runs. Wild Bill Wright is a switch hitter, a center fielder for the Washington Elite Giants. And he's going to try and punch one through for the E-Squad to maybe take the lead. Ground ball third base. That's taken by Radcliffe, who's going to step on the base himself and retire the side. So the East tries to get some runs, and it doesn't work. So that retires the side. Matlock is out of the game. Page, Satchel Page, will be the new pitcher here in the bottom of the fourth. Maybe the most famous of all the all of all the Negro Leaguers, Satchel is an A plus pitcher, as you can see on his card. Third time through the order, he becomes an A pitcher. We'll see how far they stick with him. We're going to the bottom of the fourth. We are scoreless at Chicago's Comiskey Park in the 1936 East-West game. Newt Allen is leading off. He is the second-place hitter for the West squad, and he swings and misses for strike three, and Satchel has his first strikeout on the day. Wilson Reedus, one for one today. Satchel's pitch is lifted to center field. That's cool, Papa Bell. And he'll make the play. And Alec Radcliffe stands in. He's the third baseman and the cleanup hitter for the West squad. Here comes Satchel's pitch. And this one's hit on the ground. To Chester Williams. And he's going to throw across to Jim West, and that will retire the side in the fourth. We played four innings, and we have a very different game than the actual thing. Um, by this time, uh, the uh, in the real game, the East was leading three to nothing, and we are scoreless in this one. All right, 1936 East-West game. Cool Papa Bell will lead off the fifth inning against Floyd Cranson. The pitch to Papa is strike three swinging, and that is one down. Sammy Hughes, the second baseman for Washington, steps in. And this one is a strikeout, also a strikeout for Cranson. That's his second. And Sam Bankhead, underrated Negro Leagues player, really amazing player. Ground ball first base, that's taken uh, by Harris after my big buildup. He's going to flip to Cranson, covering the bag. And that'll retire the East in the fifth inning. But we go to the bottom of the fifth. Satchel Page coming back out. Bullet Rogan, Harry Else. Curtis Harris coming up for the West squad. I'm trying to put a dent in the scoreboard and see what happens. The pitch to Bullet Rogan is knocked for a base hit to left field. That's the first hit allowed by Satchel Page. Rogan's aboard, and Harry Else comes to the plate. Uh, let's see what they want him to do. Uh, Vic Harris is going to... Let's see. And Else is squaring around to Bunt. And he gets it down. He does get it down. Uh, that's taken by Johnson. Johnson's going to throw to first for the sacrifice for the out. And that's going to move Rogan to second base. Curtis Harris, the first baseman, comes up against Page with a man on second. Will 
Bullet Joe Rogan is on second base with one out. And Curtis Harris stands in. And this one's a ground ball to third. Johnson gloves this one. He throws to first. And look at Rogan with a head first slide. Getting into third base. All right. So let's see what they're going to do here. Rogan's on third. There's two men out. The eighth place hitter, Willard Brown, is up. Page is on the mound. He wants to face Brown. They're not going to walk him to get to the pitcher, Cranson. So here comes the pitch. And this one is hit hard. Uh, let's see where this one ends up. Got an air chance. Air chance. The line shot right at. Chopped in front of the plate. Let's see who can take it. Biz Mackey is on it. He will throw to first and make the play. Barely they get him. And that will retire the side. Willard Brown almost beat that out, but he did not. And we go to the top of the sixth. We are scoreless in Chicago at Chicago's Comiskey Park in the 1936 East-West game. Biz Mackey is 0 for 2 today. And that's going to do it for him. That's going to do it for Biz. Because Josh Gibson is going to pinch hit against Floyd Cranson to lead off the sixth inning. Um, yeah, this is Cranson's second full inning of work. Josh Gibson will doubtless go in to do the catching. He's pinch hitting for Biz Mackey. He played for Pittsburgh Crawfords in 1936. And the pitch from Cranson is ball four. Gibson's aboard with a walk and... That's going to bring up Jimmy Crutchfield. Crutchfield with nobody out and Gibson on first. Lifts one to right. Lifts one to right. That's Fragritas. He will make the catch. And that's one down. Gibson returns to first base. Chester Williams stands in. He's one for two today. And this is a range check. And it's a range check. For Alex Radcliffe, who's got it. And no, he doesn't have it. It's under his glove for a base hit. And Gibson will stop at second. So the East squad has runners at first and second with one out. And first baseman Jim West coming to the plate. Artemis Gordon is on deck. No, not really. Uh, and West has drawn two walks in two at-bats today. And West is trouble. This one's going to go over the head of Bullet Joe Rogan and get all the way to the wall. It's going to score our first run. Josh Gibson is home. And Chester Williams is at third. They are going to wave him. Let's see what... Logan's arm is excellent. They're going to hold... No, they're not. They're going to send him. They're waving Williams around third. And he's safe. 
It's a two-run double for Jim West. And the East has taken a 2-0 lead. West is on second with one out. And Judy Johnson comes to the plate. Judy Johnson's 0 for 2 today. Satchel Page is on deck. And Johnson lifts one in the air to center field. That's Eddie Dwight, who's going to make the play, and that's out number two. And Satchel will bat here in the sixth inning. They'll leave him in to pitch, and West is on second with two men out. See if Satchel can help his cause. He does by drawing a walk, and there's first and second one more time for the East squad. Page on first, West on second, Cool Papa Bell coming to the plate, and that might be enough for Vic Harris to pull him. Cranson is due to lead off the sixth inning. But he doesn't want to let things get any more out of hand, so he's going to go to Andy Cooper. Um, yeah, they're going to make a double switch. It's going to be Joe Rogan moving to first base. And in left field. It's going to be Harry Milton. And Milton will bat ninth. He is with the Kansas City Monarchs. And the new pitcher will be Cooper, and Cooper will bat in the seventh spot. Harris comes out, and this is a big at bat in this ball game because you don't want to get too far behind against Satchel Page. So let's see what happens here. Cool Papa Bell with a chance to drive in a run. First baseman Big Jim West is on first base is on second base. Satchel Page is on first base. There's two men out. Andy Cooper is a B pitcher, as you can see. He's a lefty, as you can also see on this card. And he pitched for the Kansas City Monarchs in 1936, an all-time great uh, in Negro Leagues baseball. Let's see what he Cool Papa can do with them. And this is an error check. Cool Papa slaps this one, and it's at the second baseman, Newt Allen. But Allen's going to make the play on it, and that will retire the side. But the damage is done because the East squad has taken a 2 0 lead, and Satchel Page is on the mound. And he's not even breathing heavy. All right, so uh, let's see if the East squad wants to make any other changes. Um, not yet. So it's going to be Henry Milton, the left, the new left fielder for the West squad. He played for Kansas City in 1936. Left-handed batter. This one's a ground ball to first base. Rogan's going to take it himself, and that's one down. Eddie Dwight comes to the plate. Right-handed hitting center fielder. Maybe they want to make a change here. Eddie is 0 for 2 in the ball game, And they're going to go with Leroy Taylor. Uh, also a left-handed hitting batter, and also a Kansas City Monarch. 
So Taylor will pinch hit here in the sixth for Dwight and take over in center field. This one is slapped on the line past the third baseman, Johnson, and it's going to get into the corner. Taylor finds himself on second base with one out and Newt Allen coming to the plate. Newt 0 for 2 with a strikeout. One man out. Taylor on second. And Allen coming to the plate. Pitch to Newt is trouble. This one's to the gap in right center. Taylor will score easily. Allen's going to get all the way around to third base. And with one out, the West squad has the tying run 90 feet away. Wilson Reed is coming to the plate. He's one for two today. Page is in a jam. He's got one man out. And the infield is going to play in against Reedus. The pitch to him is a ground ball to short. It's a ground ball to short. Yep, it's gloved by Chet Williams, and he's going to fire home, and Allen's trying to score, and Allen is going to be tagged out by Josh Gibson. So Reedus takes his spot at first base, but the West squad had the contact play on, and the East threw him out. So with two outs and Reedus on first, it's Alec Radcliffe, who's 0 for 2. Satchel might be getting out of this one. This one's lifted in the air to left field. And it's going to be taken by Sam Bankhead for out number 3. So the West responds with one run, but they can't get that tying run across. We go to the seventh inning. Got a little bit of a nail-biter going here. It's 2-1 East. And against Andy Cooper, it's going to be Hughes, Bankhead, and Josh Gibson for the East. A good chance for them to score, one would think. And the pitch... Is ball four to Sammy Hughes. Hughes draws a walk. Not a lot of speed. Bankhead stands in. Right-handed batter. He's one for two today with a walk. Cooper's pitch is trouble. Bankhead lines this one down the left field line. Hughes around second. He's going to take third. They're actually going to try and score him. Center fielder is Taylor. New center fielder. Who pinch hit last inning for Eddie Dwight. His arm is not strong, however. They're going to wave Hughes. And the throw is not in time. It's 3-1 East. Bankhead with a double that puts... Extends the East lead. Josh Gibson at the plate. Andy Cooper on the mound. Bankhead on second. There's nobody out. And Gibson hits one in the air to center field. It's way back. Taylor to the wall, and he's got it. Let's see if Bankhead moves up. He does not. He bluffs, and he holds. Big chance for the East there, but Gibson didn't quite get enough of it. Crutchfield at the plate. Bankhead back at second base. The pitch to Jimmy is a line shot base hit. This one goes to right field. The right fielder is Frog Reedus. And Reedus is up with it. They're going to wave Bankhead around third. The throw home is not in time. It's 4-1 East squad with Crutchfield coming through with a big single. Chet Williams coming up.
two for three today with a run scored. Williams is a right-handed batter against Cooper. There's one man out. Crutchfield's on first. Line drive, base hit, Williams. This one falls in right field. The throw's going to come into second as Crutchfield's going to get all the way to third. And Jim West stands in as the batter with Crutchfield at third and Williams on first and one only, one man out. West has a chance to do some damage here. They're going to play the infield in. Cooper to the belt. The infield is in. The pitch. Ball two. Ball two to West. He's ahead in the count. West is one for one today. Two walks. And a big two-run double. That's ball four. Cooper loses him, and the bases are now loaded. Might not be the worst thing. Judy Johnson is at the plate. Satchel Page is on deck. There's one man out. The bases are loaded. And it's four to one east. Judy Johnson stands in against Cooper. Here comes Crutchfield from third. The squeeze is on. He gets it down. Yep, it's fielded by Radcliffe. The throw to Allen retires Johnson at first, but the squeeze works to perfection. And Crutchfield scores the fifth run of the ball game for the East squad. It's 5-1 East and Satchel Page coming to bat. With two outs and runners at second and third. And Satchel lifts one to left field. This is going to be... This is going to be... Milton making the play and retiring the side, but the damage is critical for the West because the East just scored three runs and on three hits, and they left two men. They could have been worse. So we go to the bottom of the seventh. It is 5-1 East, and Satchel Page still on the mound. For the West squad, it's Bullet Rogan, Harry Else, and then pitcher Andy Cooper do. But I think we might see some subs at this point. Rogan, we know, is going to bat. So Rogan, they'll let bat. The pitch to Rogan is a... Strikeout for Page. That's one down in the seventh. Harry Else has walked and sacrificed, and he is going to be pulled at this point in favor of Subby Bias, who will take over the catching duties. And looks like Pat Patterson is going to be in the on-deck circle for Cooper. Bias We'll go on and do the catching. The pitch to Bias is a range check. And Bell can't get there. It falls in for a base hit. And Bias is aboard with a single. And now we're going to have a pinch hitter for Cooper. It's going to be Pat Patterson. 
the third baseman for Kansas City. In the bottom of the seventh, with Bias at first and one man out, Patterson is a switch hitter, batting against Satchel. And he lines a base hit. Patterson to right field, and so Bias will stop at second. The West squad has two men on, and Willard Brown standing at the plate. Brown is 0 for 2. He is the shortstop for the West squad, batting 8th. And this one's lifted to center field, where Papa Bell's going to make the play, and the runners will hold. And Henry Milton is the last gasp in the seventh inning for the West squad. Milton is 0 for 1. He pinch hit in the fifth, or I'm sorry, in the sixth unsuccessfully. We have a ground ball hit to second. That's Hughes. And he gloves it and flips for the third out of the inning, and the side is retired. All right. So, a disappointing inning for the West squad. Ted Trent is going to come on and do the pitching. In the top of the eighth, Trent, also one of the best in Negro League's history. They're going to bat Trent ninth. Remove Milton from the game and put Herman Dunlap batting seventh into left field. Dunlap was with Chicago in 1936. All righty. So the substitutions have been made, and we are ready to go. Um, Ted Trent is on the mound. Let's give you the numbers on Cranson. Three and two-thirds innings, five hits, three, four walks, only one strikeout, and five runs all were earned. Uh, and he is on the hook for the loss, should that come to pass. So, Trent is in the game. He is a right-handed pitcher. He was with Chicago and a number of other ball clubs called Big Florida. That was his nickname. And you can see that against Negro League competition, he was a D pitcher. Cool Papa Bell is one for three, a stolen base, a caught stealing, and a walk. He's leading off the eighth inning against Ted Trent. The pitch is a ground ball at first base. That's Rogan, who's going to take it himself for one down. Sammy Hughes. Hughes is 0 for 3 with a walk and a run scored. Fly ball center field. That's going to be Leroy Taylor, and that's two down. And Sam Bankhead, two for three today, double, run scored, ribby, walk, heck of a day. Ground ball third base, that one's for Radcliffe, and it's by him. A base hit for Bankhead, his third of the day, and he is an accomplished base stealer, but Josh Gibson's coming to the plate against Ted Trent, and the fans want to see Josh bat with somebody on, so they will. This one is a range check. Sawed him off. It's in front of the plate. Bias fumbles it. They're going to give Gibson a hit. 
They could just as easily give him an error, and Gibson's aboard with an infield single. Bankhead moves to second base. There's two men on, two men out for Jimmy Crutchfield. Who had a huge hit in the seventh inning, driving in a run. He's one for four with a ribby and a run scored. And Crutchfield lines a base hit. This one lands in right field. Around third comes Bankhead. The right fielder is Reedus. The throw is coming home. It's not in time, and Bankhead scores the sixth run for the East squad. Gibson goes to third base. There's men at the corners, and Chet Williams is at the plate. We're going to see a hitter for Williams. It's going to be Felton Snow. Snow is going to bat for Williams. Williams on a three-for-four day. Will take a seat. And Felton Snow... Played for the Washington Elite Giants in 1936. He is a right-handed batter. And he's got runners at the corners with two men out. And Ted Trent's got himself in a world of trouble. The pitch to Snow is a ground ball to shortstop. That's gloved by... Brown, Willard Brown is going to flip to second to Newt Allen, and that will retire the side, but a back-breaking run scores for the East squad. And it is now 6-1 to one in the bottom of the eighth. The West running out of time against Satchel Page. Leroy Taylor is going to lead off. He doubled back in the sixth as a pinch hitter. New Dallin will bat second in the inning, and then Wilson Reedus. Taylor. Taylor hits a ground ball at Hughes. Nope, I'm mistaken. No, he doesn't. Taylor hits a ground ball at Hughes that sneaks through a bad hop single, and Taylor's aboard as Page is now in his third time through the order. Newt Allen is at bat. Let's see if they want to hit for him. Bench is getting a little bit thin. They're not going to. Allen's going to stay in. Allen's on a one-for-three day with a triple ribby and a whiff. Ground ball, second base. That's Hughes. He fumbles it, but he's going to throw to first for the out. Taylor advances to second. And Wilson Reedus comes to the plate with a man on second. He's one for three today. Page pitching aggressively. That's a fly ball to left field. Left fielder is Sam Bankhead, who's going to make the catch. That's two down. And Alec Radcliffe with two outs. And Taylor in scoring position takes a called third strike three. And that retires the side for the West. We go to the ninth. It's the East six and the West one in the East-West game of 1936. See who's left on the bench for the West, for the East squad. Sorry, for the East. Uh, Jim West is coming to the plate. And... Johnny Washington is going to bat for him. Here in the ninth inning. Johnny Washington was a Pittsburgh Crawford in 1936. Against Ted Trent, Washington lifts one in the air to right field. This one's going to be taken 
by Reedus, and that's one man out. Judy Johnson comes to the plate. Judy Johnson comes to the plate. Nobody on. One man out. Johnson's working on an 0 for 4 day. Not anymore. He draws a walk. And he's on first base. They're going to pull Satchel Page at this point. At a 6 to 1 game. And Zoli Wrights is going to do the pinch hitting for Page. And Bill Bird will come in and pitch the ninth. And Wright hits one at third. That's Radcliffe to Newt Allen and on to first base to Rogan. And that is a double play to get out of the inning for Big Ted Trent. However, however, we're going to the bottom of the ninth. And the East squad has a 6-1 to one lead in the 1936 East-West game. Bill Bird is going to be the new pitcher. As you can see, he is an A-plus pitcher uh, his first two times through the order. So Bird will bat ninth, and the West squad, yeah, sorry, the East squad has used its entire roster. For the West, it's going to be Rogan, Else, and Dunlap against Bill Bird. The pitch to Rogan is lined, a base hit into center field, and look at it scoot by Papa Bell. Rogan's going to stop at second. That's his second hit of the day. He's got himself a double. And Subby Bias looking to keep things going. Bias is one for one. He is the catcher today, uh, the backup catcher for the West squad. Strikes out swinging. Bias is gone. And Herman Dunlap, Chicago American Giants. Center fielder against Bill Bird gets hit by the pitch. I don't think that's what Oscar Charleston had in mind when he brought in Bill Bird. So there's two on with Willard Brown at the plate. One man out. Ted Trent is in the on-deck circle. He will not bat. It's going to be Lou Dials standing in the on-deck circle, ready to bat uh, as the pinch hitter. And he is the last man to get in the game for the West squad. And Willard Brown has hit one high and deep to center field. Cool pop a bell to the wall, and it's gone. Elvis has left the building. It's now 6-4 to four in favor of the East, and there's one man out in the bottom of the ninth. Lou Dials is going to be the pinch hitter in the bottom of the ninth. Huh. He is a left-handed batter. He pitched. He played for Chicago. He was the right fielder for the Chicago American Giants. In 1936, there's one man out. Dials. He has a comebacker that Bird gloves. He's going to flip to the new first baseman, Johnny Washington. And that's two down. So with two down, Leroy Taylor's got to keep it going. It's six to four, two outs, bottom of the ninth. Anybody's game. And this one is a shot at first base. Washington dives and he has it. He's going to flip it to Bird for the third out of the inning and the game. 
and the East squad defeats the West squad in the 1936 East-West game by a score of 6-4, to four, considerably closer than the 10-2 to two blowout that happened in real life. Let's go over the the line scores for you for the victorious East squad. They scored six runs. They had 11 hits. And they committed no errors. For the For the West, they scored four runs on six, eight, nine hits, and they committed one error. Six to four is your final. The winning pitcher is Satchel Page, and the losing pitcher. It's Harry Cranson. You can't pitch your way into a save, so Bill Bird does not earn a save in this one. Most valuable player, uh, Page went five innings, allowed one run. He allowed six hits. He wasn't flawless. He struck out three. He got the win. Uh, we'll say he's the MVP. Uh, offensively, you could give it a number of ways. Shortstop Chet Williams for the East squad had three hits. Uh, Jimmy Crutchfield had a big one in the seventh. Um, several candidates there. Jim West hit a big two-run double in the sixth. Uh, that gave the East the lead they never relinquished. But we'll give it to Page for five innings of pretty solid pitching and uh, winning the game for the West, getting credit, or for the East, getting credit as the winning pitcher. A lot of stars, a lot of famous names in this 1936 East-West game. Encourage you to take a look at it on Pine Tar Baseball uh, as an option for your playing. There's a Incredible number of Hall of Famers in 1936 uh, Negro Leagues Baseball. Names that you'd recognize, Satchel Page, Josh Gibson, Judy Johnson, Sammy Hughes, um, Wilson Reedus, and uh, one of my favorites, uh, Bullet Joe Rogan. So um, that is it from here. Thank you for watching the 1936 East-West Replay. Uh, courtesy of Pine Tar Baseball. Pine Tar Baseball uh, can be bought at ttlbaseballgame.com and you can pick up these cards. They're on sale right now at that site. ttlbaseballgame.com. My name's Kurt Berglund. Thank you so much for watching. Please click like and subscribe to my channel. So long, everybody.